Chat only mode. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us tonight for a very interesting webinar on you can for beginners and actually just uh, more workout nutrition for people that are just getting into exercising as well. Um, I'm Varun Shriram, your host. Joined as always by my good friend Seth Bronheim, registered dietitian. Seth, how you doing tonight? Doing great, Varun. Well, Seth, this is um, this is going to be fun tonight. You know, for a lot of folks that have joined us for webinars in the past, um, you know, we've often talked about you can for for a variety of things, and um, you know, discuss the application of you can for different types of endurance sports and and things of that nature. But today, we're we're really going to talk about what's one of the unique aspects uh, about you can and how it can benefit that beginner who's just starting to run or or just starting to get into an exercise routine. Um, so we're really going to attack this from a, a bit of a different angle today. And Seth, I know this is some uh, a topic that you've been speaking a lot about um, at various uh, you know fitness facilities uh, across the country. So this is something that uh, that is very uh, near and dear to your heart. Yes, indeed, definitely. We. It's just, we, I really feel the beginner runner and especially the beginner exerciser, um, a lot of times they're ignored because they're just starting out and a lot of people say things like, you know, just get started moving or um, just do, you know, a two or three mile run walk and um, so sometimes people aren't just, aren't ready to just start moving. They, they are, they're fuel limitations and, you know, someone, you know, a lot of people starting a marathon program. And some of them haven't ran in 20 years, and they're you know they're done with their kids, and they're they're, they're looking to get fit again. But you know, a, a lot of times we hear that the attrition rate on on marathon programs is high because people after a few weeks they don't know if they can do it, and they a lot of times it, if they have the proper fuel, they might be able. So Seth, that's that's one of the things um, you know that w where we'll start for for somebody that's just getting started in an, an exercise routine, you know. One of the things that you'll often hear is, oh, I'm just going out there for 30 minutes. I don't really need anything. But how is that notion a little bit flawed? And, and, and how do we all differ in terms of availability of, of fuels, uh, you know, somebody that's, that's very fit versus somebody that's just starting to get into an exercise routine? So a lot of people feel, you know, that they don't need anything for that 30 minutes because they have enough stored fuel for those 30 minutes. A lot of people say, oh... You know, I don't use any nutrition when it's under an hour. Um, but the truth is that, especially for the beginner, um, you know, that person who hasn't walked an hour in 10 years, who hasn't, you know, um, exercised in a long time, because they've been so inactive, their stored fuel amounts in their body, you know, the stored carbohydrate that we a lot of time rely on called glycogen, uh, is actually very low. Um, the, the picture and the graph uh, and the pie graphs you're seeing on your screen you know, the first um, A looks at, you know, um, a lean athlete, and then below it is the, the obese athlete, um, and then C is someone with type 2 diabetes. And, you know, the dark gray area shows the amount of glycogen that the that, that person's using during exercise. You can see the lean person um, is using much more than the person who's obese. And as you get to type 2, you see th 13 plus or minus 6, you know, um, you're really looking at a much smaller amount. So, the more overweight you are, the more prone you are to conditions like prediabetes, the likelihood is fuel you think you can rely on. So that person that goes out for 30 minutes there, as soon as they up the intensity a little bit and they start maybe that run portion of the run walk, um, they're going to be burning through some of that glycogen and they're going to fatigue earlier since they don't have that bigger stored fuel. But also what th their blood sugar is very much at risk for going lower. Um, because they're burning through that stored fuel, um, and that low blood glucose a lot of times is what's so tied to fatigue um, for the beginner. And what's ironic, Seth, is you know, it, it, it like we we talked about at the outset, it very often is that beginner, um, you know, who's saying that, oh yeah, I'm just going out there for 30 minutes. I'm just doing 40 minutes of exercise. I really don't need to to think about my fuel where this is really showing us that it's it's perhaps the beginner in, in a way that has to think about their fuel the most you know because they're they're kind of starting behind the eight ball in terms of what they're able to store from a carbohydrate standpoint exactly and and even at lower intensities the beauty is that you know that you can you can burn 
fat as fuel. But the problem is, is that you know, so the beginner they can't, they don't have a large store of glycogen, which is more used for your, you know, uh, more of your your running and you know your interval type training and a little bit higher intensity. Um, and but they're also able to, they should be able to access their fat as energy too. But um, especially for those lower intensities. But if you think about it, you know, if if someone's thinking, oh, I'm trying to, you know, they're getting back into fitness and they they think to have, you know they're going out for you know they're having a meal before and they have a bagel and a banana or a bowl of cereal before you know a Saturday morning run and they're a beginner runner that that large carbohydrate load right before is going to spike their blood sugar and now not only do they have a small amount of glycogen that they're relying on um, because they're just starting out because they don't have any training adaptations as well one of the beauties of exercise is that the training adaptation is you grow that carbohydrate store larger. So you can last longer too, um, but if they have a large carbohydrate food meal before and they spike their blood sugar and their insulin levels, you know one of the problems is they can't actually also burn fat. So they they can't burn fat, and they they have they they don't really have stored carbohydrate to use either. So um, so they're really limited in, in, in how to how what kind of stored energy they can use. And you know when when we talk about the the beginner person just getting into an exercise routine or getting into a marathon pr- program and, and talking about this idea that they need to fuel or, or need to think about fueling prior to their workout, it, it's you know we're not at all suggesting that you should just dump a ton of calories or dump a, a ton of carbohydrate into your body right before exercise, you know, because that can of course be detrimental depending on the the quality of carbohydrate that can be detrimental to. A weight loss goal, but it, it's really exactly. finding that balance that can energize you and not limit your ability to burn fat. Exactly. Well, here and you know, and one of the training adaptations is not only to get your glycogen larger, but it's also to improve your ability to burn fat. You know, people might remember from you know, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and you know, one of the beauties of endurance training, especially, is the mitochondria grows larger. There's more fat-burning enzymes surrounding the mitochondria, so you can so you get the training adaptations are really to also help your body burn fat. That's an endurance training adaptation. So, Seth, let's um let's take a look kind of specifically um, at a uh, comparison that or, or actually I'm sorry I, I jumped a, ahead a little bit, but um what would you say are kind of the takeaways? I, we might have already covered this, but but what are the takeaways that that this slide is summarizing from what we were just talking about? Oh, well, you know, what, one of the main one of the main things is that even if you have um, low levels of glycogen when you're a beginner runner, um, you want to be able to tap into those fat stores to help compensate. And um, you know, you can, which uh, you know, our carbohydrate, which slowly releases into the body, doesn't spike those insulin levels. And if you think about it, if you do have that um, that energy bar before, especially a sugar-based bar. Um, a lot of people look for things like you know sugar-based Red Bulls or um, granola bars. Those types of carbs and energy products spike your blood sugar. They spike your insulin, and your body says, "Hey, burn those calories first. Don't burn fat right now." You can comes in slowly into the body, allowing you to burn fat. Um, and as I mentioned b- before, you know, as as you increase exercise intensity, um, a lot of that comes from muscle glycogen. And so, um, beginner exercisers don't have so. They don't have the same amount of glycogen the veteran exerciser does. So you hear a lot of veteran runners, especially, say, "Oh, I go out for two hours, and I'm fine." That that's really not the case for the, the beginner runner. Um, they you can slow release into the body helps keep their blood sugar steady and helps them compensate for the fact that they have that low stored fuel of glycogen, helping them succeed more, um, especially in those first couple of months they're exercising, instead of setting them up for low blood sugar and um, really draining the system. And let's let's look at it from you know kind of a specific product product standpoint. Let, let's look at the difference between what's happening in terms of blood sugar and energy when we're comparing taking in a scoop of our tropical orange you can prior to exercise versus taking in you know a Cliff Bar during exercise. And then this is not you know to perhaps pick on any. One specific product or brand. I mean, a, a Cliff Bar, you know, is pretty representative of of a lot of sugar based energy bars. If if we look at a you know kind of a comparison over here, you see the Cliff Bar uh, with twenty two grams of sugar and two hundred fifty calories. Uh, you know, might be something that that somebody would eat 
um, 30 minutes or an hour before they exercise. Uh, meanwhile, the, the you can um, is also something that you can have be, be for exercise and, and they act very, very differently. Right, Seth? Yeah. I mean, if you go, if you, you know, if you go back to that comparison one time, um, the main thing is that the cliff bar is multi-nutrient, right? It's not just carbohydrate, but it's got some fi fiber in it, um, some fat and some protein in addition to, you know, um, a bolus of carbohydrate. So it's, it's it very much, can represent almost like a mixed meal too in a, in a 250 calorie serving. Um, yes, yeah, so you can go to the comparison. So if you look, I mean, if you, if you look here, the, the the biggest problem with the Cliff Bar is that you basically the, the you know these were laboratory it's a laboratory study, and if you look the the Cliff Bar had someone's blood sugar go from 75 milligrams per deciliter up to 100. Now, within the first 15 minutes of exercise, blood sugar is tanking in, into around 60 milligrams per deciliter, a little bit below when they started. Whereas you can, it's coming in slowly. Blood sugar is only rising around 16 milligrams per deciliter, and then it's staying with a normal range um, for the exercise. Keeping your blood sugar steady is really what you can is doing, and it's avoiding that sig significant drop. And that's the problem if you have that Cliff Bar type of you know um, sugar-based product. Um, some of the chews, some of the, the shot blocks, um, uh, you're going to get a, a little bit of energy for the first 15 minutes, but then you have that significant letdown, um, which which really um, causes the body to feel that fatigue and, and have that low blood sugar that just doesn't help performance and definitely causes a lot of hunger pains after exercise. And Seth, you know, from a practical standpoint, I mean, this, of course, like you mentioned, in a laboratory study setting, um, you know they're they're going to keep going and going because that's the that's the intention of of the study you know to to continue exercising. But from a practical standpoint, especially for somebody that's just starting to to exercise and just starting to get on an exercise plan, if they consume you know this type of fast acting or or, or sugar based carbohydrate meal uh, or or product prior to to exercise. What in all reality is going to happen to them when they experience that huge drop in blood sugar? So if someone's going out for 30 minutes, if you look on this on this graph, you know, 15, 15 minutes into the exercise, their blood sugar is dropping and their body is compensating and, and it's rising again. But they're having a significant drop in blood sugar halfway through the first 30-minute period. And if someone's going out for that 30 to 40-minute period, that's what they're feeling. And that's why a lot of people, you know, have to stop in the beginning, you know, in a – 30 or 40 minute workout 20 minutes in because they're getting that blood sugar drop, especially if they've had these types of foods before. And, and, and I guess, you know, practically speaking too, I, I mean, if you're, if you're just new to, to running and exercising, I mean, th this could just cause a, a lot of people aren't going to get past that, that drop point, right? It, I mean, it, it could just cause frustration or cause fatigue, I, you know, kind of that idea, I just don't have it today, or, or, you know, I'm, I'm taking on more than I can handle. And, um, you talked about, you know, the, the attrition rate, Seth, when people start a training program or, you know, a marathon program or, or any type of training workout program, how, you know, a, a challenge for, for new exercisers is just keeping it up and, and continuing that exercise program. I mean, if you're experiencing this big, big drop and feeling terrible 15 or 20 minutes into your workout, how does that impact, you know, kind of that ability to keep going? Well, well if, 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 if glucose and, and blood sugar stability is tied with keeping your brain steady and you're having that drop in blood sugar, you know, you're not going to want to keep going. You're going to want to stop. And, 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 and that's the problem with, with, a, with that your food choice before you exercise really determines your energy, energy levels. And, you know, you want to have that steady blood sugar and that steady release. And, you know, especially for that 30 or 40 minute run, you know, you're, you're going to want to keep your blood sugar steady also because, Post exercise, if your blood sugar is dropping, you're hungry. We, I do a lot of group runs, and I know you do too. And people come back and they're 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 taking down you know recovery bars that are very high in sugar, and they're having two at a time sometimes because they're so depleted. And if you've got a weight loss goal, the last thing you want to do is after your exercise is consume a lot of sugar again um, and overconsume calories that are just gonna not not help your weight loss goal. And, you know, I think that's one of the fascinating things, you know, when we when we talk about this whole idea of 
of energy. You know, pe- people often think of the foods you consume of energy more as what do they make me feel like in the moment without considering, you know, the long-term effect. And, and when I'm talking about the long-term effect, you know, I'm not even talking about, you know, weeks and months and years. I'm, I'm really talking about what is the impact going to be after I'm done with that workout if I take in something that's going to give me that quick dose of energy. And, and Seth, you know, you, you just nailed it. And, and I think that's so, so relevant for the, for the new exerciser and the beginning exerciser to hear. You know, it's not about taking in something that's just going to give you that quick boost of energy and, and satisfy you in the moment. You know, it's really taking in something that's going to sustain you and, and also impact you positively in that post-workout period, right? So is that something, you know, that it, well, perhaps that's something that you, we may feel that the beginner doesn't consider, but, but how important is that kind of not just how do I feel in the moment um, idea, but also how do I feel an hour later or two hours later? Right, exactly. I mean, a lot of the gels are very much catch-up nutrition. You're waiting at a certain point during your run until you need fuel, and, it's, and it spikes you back up, and then it keeps you for a certain period, and, and you spike yourself again, and you can end up consuming a lot of extra calories um, to try to compensate from low blood sugar. Um, and the big, and the problem is is that a lot, a lot of people hear about sports nutrition products and they think, oh, I, I don't know if I'm ready for that, right? Um, someone goes into a running store and they buy their first pair of shoes. Um, are they going over to the nutrition wall? And some of them really are thinking um, those products are sugar-based or those are extra calories and they don't want to go over there because they don't want to consume these longer exercise. But you can is so different. I mean – we were meant for infants originally, that if they weren't fed every two hours, they wouldn't live. It was meant for life-threatening hypoglycemia. And th- th- we, have, we have a patent on a cooking method that, as you see in this, this chart, you know, allows you can to break down slowly. The enzymes break down you can slowly over time, keeping your blood sugar steady. And you know, for that person who's just starting out, a scoop of you can, a you can snack bar, um, they can have this before their exercise to keep to, to actually give them a positive outcome on their nutrition um, and and succeed and and they just don't and they just need to understand its its uniqueness. So really, what is unique about you can and we've talked about this a, a little bit already. Seth kind of alluded to it, but to, to get a little bit more specific, you know that that super starch, which is the carbohydrate in you can, which delivers that slow and steady release of energy and and that really consistent uh, energy. Is what sets you can apart from you know other yes. foods or sports nutrition products, and and it really comes back to the story, right? I've, I, I know that some folks on here might be familiar with it, but but Seth, take take us quickly through the story behind you can and and why that super starch is so significant. And so our 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 founder son Jonah has a very rare disease. I mean, he can't basically create internal blood sugar, and suffers from life threatening low blood sugar. Um, and that means they have to be, they basically have to be fed every two hours. It's a life by the clock. And our founder's wife, Wendy, was setting multiple alarm clocks, especially at night, afraid she would miss one of those nighttime feedings. Um, there was years of research to look at a longer lasting and, and a, a slower burning carbohydrate to keep Jonah's blood sugar steady at night. And after really eight years of looking at barley, tapiocas, rices, wheats, all different types of peas and resistant starches, you know, UCAN is basically non-GMO corn, but it's cooked over 40 hours with just heat and water, no enzymes, no chemicals. I mean, it, it had to be natural because it was meant for infants originally. And this makes it very easy on the stomach. And then, it's break, then, it, then it breaks down slowly over time. For Jonah, he has a large enough dose to sustain him over eight hours, but you could have a smaller serving size, like in a UCAN snack bar, or in, in a scoop of you can or a packet, and and it will sustain you for your exercise. So the the super starch, which is unique to you can, you know, just to reiterate, Seth, you already talked about it a little bit, but it's really that patented cooking process with just heat and water, no chemicals, no enzymes, that this non-GMO corn, this this starch goes through that that keeps your blood or, or that allows it to release very slowly and keep your blood sugar steady. So. You know, the super starch is completely natural, non-GMO, and gluten-free, and it's a very, very unique carbohydrate that was developed for a very specific purpose, which was maintaining steady energy levels in these kids. But then, you know, as we've already talked about at the outset, I mean, there's such a 
huge, huge health and fitness benefit in, uh, and, and energy benefit in terms of managing your blood sugar and keeping your blood sugar steady. And, and that's really, that notion is really what caused us to, to be curious, um, you know, to explore and discover where else this one of a kind energy source could be used. And that's really where we ran our initial clinical trial, which, you know, this is somewhat similar to the graph we led with um, at the beginning. But, but Seth, you know, you could talk us through this, um, this slide right here. I mean, what, what's the takeaway here? I mean, we, the blue, the blue um, line really represents maltodextrin, which is really, it was an innovation toward your simple sugars. And super starch, the key carbohydrate in UCAN, is an innovation toward your maltodextrins, which are in so many of your, um, you know, sports nutrition products, especially endurance nutrition products. And the, you see a significant spike in blood sugar with maltodextrin, and again, causing that high and then low effect, which really causes fatigue. Um, also, that big spike in blood sugar is telling your body to burn sugar, don't burn body fat, um, which is really not good for the beginner runner, especially with the weight loss goal. Whereas the red line is you can. It's slowly releasing, keeping blood sugar steady, curbing hunger after exercise, and not causing that big spike in blood sugar to tell your body to store um, fat, but really keep your blood sugar steady, allowing your body to burn fat as its energy source too. One of the other really unique things about you can, uh, especially for, for the beginner runner or, or the beginner exerciser who's got a body composition and, and, a, and a weight loss goal, uh, is the impact of, of you can to deliver energy without messing up your ability to burn fat. And, and it's very much tied into this fat storage, fat storage hormone insulin and the impact that, that you can, or, or the lack of impact, I should even say that that you can has on insulin and, and Seth, you know, before I get you to kind of speak specifically to that, I mean, you know, you and I hear this all the time. We're at different uh, fitness facilities, you know, and, and, you know, talking to trainers or, 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 you know, sampling, you can, and, and talking to members. Um, and you know, if they have a, a weight loss goal or, or if they're a new exerciser, you know, sometimes there's this fear of taking in carbohydrate or the, there's this idea that, Oh, if I take in carbohydrates, it's going to cause me to gain weight. Or if I, you know, taking carbohydrates before I exercise, uh, I'm not going to be able to burn fat. But we already kind of talked about at the very beginning what the flaw in that thinking can be for beginner exercisers because they're not coming into the workout with that same level of stored carbohydrate that they can rely on like your, you know, lean and, and, and more fit uh, individual has. So, how do we address that issue that so many people or that fear that so many people have of if I take in a carbohydrate that I'm not really going to be burning fat? Why, why does that not apply for you can? Well, it's the main thing is you can has all the opposite effects of traditional carbohydrates because it was meant for medical purposes. And when you look at the way it releases over time, it keeps it doesn't cause that spike in blood sugar. It actually causes a nice steadiness. And we showed that, you know, um, in our in these trials, that this is looking at insulin. Insulin's that hormone that tells your body, "Hey, you've got all this sugar in your blood. Don't burn fat. Burn that sugar." The red line here, if you can look on this graph, is showing insulin levels, and it's basically flatlined. It's very low levels. So as the body takes in you can, it doesn't get that signal to store fat, but in fact, burn it as your fuel. So that's such a significant aspect of UCAN, its ability to deliver that steady, consistent energy. But unlike a lot of the traditional faster acting carbohydrates, it's not limiting your ability to burn fat. Um, so, you know, we've talked a lot about a lot of this stuff, so I don't need to kind of dwell too much on, on these two slides. It's really kind of just summarizing the benefit of UCAN. And one of the things also that, you know, it's kind of relevant for any type of exerciser, but the the ability of UCAN to digest so easily without causing any gastric discomfort, you, you know, a lot of people, especially beginner exercisers, again, that there's kind of a fear of eating uh, prior to exercise because you don't know how that, that meal or that food will settle in your stomach. So then instead of eating, you gravitate, you know, towards that, that sugar-based drink or, or something quick and convenient. Well, you can, the, the beauty of it is, in addition to all that, that consistency and energy that it delivers, it, it's very, very easy on the stomach. So you can have this, you know, 20 or 30 minutes before, say, a boot camp class, you know, first thing in the morning where you don't want to get up really early and eat, or you can have it, 
you know, on your way to the gym after work where, where you might not have eaten for four or five hours and, and it's not going to sit heavy in your stomach at all. So that that's a, a huge, huge, you know, aspect of you can outside of that steady and consistent energy. So Seth, I know today we really want to talk a lot about the, uh, the you can snack bars and, and kind of what's so unique about them. But with our other products, you know, the you can in powdered form, how do you suggest folks think about when to use them? I think really for, you know, if we're talking about exercise, trying a scoop of you can before that 30 to up to 60 minute workout, um, a lot of folks are having you can before those short workouts and it's helping them curb hunger afterward and keep their blood sugar steady before and especially for that morning 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. workout before a long work day. Um, the other concept of, of you can is that, you know, that same carbohydrate going back to the fact that it was meant for medical purposes and to help with life-threatening low blood sugar, that can help someone during the work day. You know, um, many people are in back-to-back -back meetings or a three- or four-hour meeting, and um, you're not, you, know, you know, to have you can um, during the meeting or before the meeting as a bridge between lunch and dinner or a bridge between breakfast and lunch keeps your blood sugar steady so you don't have that low blood sugar feeling that causes hunger or, you know, you don't get hangry, uh, you know, that combination of hunger and anger. Um, so um, very much a bridge between meals. And uh, you could have our powder version, you know, a scoop of our plain you can. Some folks mix it with a good protein powder. Um, a lot of folks have been mixing um, having you can by itself or they might, you know, add it to uh, some, some yogurt, like especially a Greek yogurt that's low in sugar. Um, in fact, I've been mixing our Cocoa Delight, our new Cocoa Delight flavor with um, a cup of Greek yogurt a lot of times as a three o'clock snack. And it's unbelievable how the hunger in my brain is just curbed. I don't have that, um, that hunger that occurs sometimes later in the day. Um, it's more like, eh, I could eat, but you know, I don't have to. So you just keep, you just keep going on. Good question from Caleb here, Seth, um, which I think is kind of relevant to what we're, um, talking about uh, at this moment, um, Caleb says, can I be able to tell that you can is working when I'm doing an aerobic exercise? And so I think that's what's so interesting. You know, as we, we've always thought of energy as, you know, something that gives us that instant gratification, you know, whether it's a stimulant, uh, you know, whether it's caffeine, whether it's that, that hit of sugar that, you know, spikes us up right away. We always think of energy as something that, okay, I'm going to take it in and then I'm going to feel it. And then, you know, 15 or 20 minutes later, I'm going to feel it again, and I'm going to feel it again, and you kind of ride that wave. What do you feel, or what can you expect to feel when you're using UCAN? I mean, for, for, that, for that person working out, um, you know, someone who's beginning exercise, again, that person that hasn't, you know, exercised in 10 years, they don't really remember what it's like to have energy during exercise. So a lot of them really feel curbed hunger after their exercise, that first couple of sessions. Then as they start getting used to it, um, they feel more sustained. Um, and that person that's already been exercising then brings you can into it. What they notice a lot of the times is that when their energy would normally drop, it doesn't. Some of them actually feel like something's kicking in. Um, but it's again, it's that sustained feeling. When your energy would normally drop, it doesn't. And this is not a type of pre-workout stimulant or caffeine or you know, sugar-based rush that you get for a little while. Um, we're, you know, we're, it's, it's delivering a consistent energy and it, it allowing you to get your workouts in and complete them and not have the high and low wave, but allow the training to give you the effects you need to without spikes in blood sugar or heavy reliance on caffeine. And what's kind of fascinating is, you know, we have a lot of people tell us that because of, you know, the, the energy products that we've become so accustomed to and, and kind of feeling that that significant jolt or, or surge, you know, sometimes people use you can and they're like, I feel nothing. And, and they're not saying that in a bad way. You know, it's not like their workout suffering. They're just not feeling kind of that, that jolt that they're used to. But then, you know, they might try that same workout without you can the next time. And then suddenly when they feel that energy drop, you know, that kind of tunes you in, uh, you know, this is what the you can is doing for me. It's, it's not that, I'm taking it in and feeling anything. It's it's just that ability to keep going and and not you know feeling crummy halfway through your workout. So that so in terms of a, you know what you can expect to feel, Caleb, I think um, there's a couple things, but uh, really that um, except I got a little bit of an echo. I think um, 
in the background. I'm not sure if you took out your headphones or anything, but uh, you still with me, Seth? No, I'm still with you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if the audience is also hearing a, an echo from me, um, but I'm not hearing an echo. Okay, good. So if, if uh, anybody that's listening in, if they are hearing an echo on my end, maybe it's just in my head, which is uh, which would be a good thing. So to answer your question, <laughs> Caleb, you know, it's 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 what Seth said. You know, it's it's the impact of what you feel after the workout with that uh, controlled hunger, and it's also the the impact of just not feeling those lulls and and feeling consistently steady throughout the duration of your workout. Um, you know, Seth, for, for the beginner, um, person, you know, again, we, we've talked a lot about you can in the, in the context of endurance sports and, uh, you know, kind of long distance marathon training, not here today, but, but, you know, a lot of people, that's what they know you can as, but you've worked with a number of, uh, you know, personal trainers across the country who, who are really finding you can as a powerful, powerful weight loss tool for their clients. And then we're, we're showing one example over here, can you can you talk a, a little bit about um, what the uh, what the lady here um, kind of experienced and how you can was able to help her? Yeah, Vaughn, you still there? I am. Okay, so um, so with this uh, this this was um, you know a personal trainer's client, and you know she was very much overeating throughout the day. Um, she said she didn't stop chewing from you know 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. snacking on chips, crackers, and goldfish, and she said when she, she had tried UCAN, it flipped the switch for her, and it curbed that kind of brain desire to, to eat, and she was having a scoop of UCAN, um, you know, paired with a protein powder mid-morning, and it just, um, it allowed her to not, you know, to break that overeating habit, and, you know, a lot of people are trying to reduce sugar intake and reduce sweets and uh, stress-based eating throughout the day, especially the work day, and, you know, um, her trainer uh, had said when, when going from a typical American diet to healthy eating, you know, you can't help you feel like the rug hasn't been ripped under you. And that's why it's such a powerful tool. We talk about a bridge between meals. And when someone has a scoop of you can, whether it's between breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner, as they approach their next meal, their, their blood sugar is steady and they're not looking for bread and pasta or crackers to snack on when they get home from work, but they're able to choose healthier choices, maybe vegetables or just have dinner and, and not feel the need to overeat because of, blood sugar dropping because of stress from the work day. So what would be a good way for somebody, you know, who is looking to, to lose weight and, and implement you can into their, you know, daily nutrition or, or as part of their workout nutrition? What's, what's a good way to get started? Now, I, I, I think you might want to choose, you know, if you're someone who's having cereal for breakfast a lot, you could swap it out. So you have a scoop of you can with a protein source. You know, some people are having, um, you know, you can with Greek yogurt. Some people are having our protein enhanced you can shake. Um, having a packet or two scoops of our protein-enhanced UCAN chocolate or vanilla and blending it with um, some ice and water and having it as a shake in the morning. Um, other folks are having lower sugar meals, you know, um, and reducing their processed carb intake, carbohydrate intake, like reducing your cereals and pretzels and those types of foods and, um, you know, having and working on portion control. But again, but Mid morning or mid afternoon, they're they're having you know what, what, they might be having a you can snack bar mid morning, and maybe our protein enhanced you can mid afternoon as a way to um, bridge the meals together. And Seth, you know a couple things there. You know when you talk about people working on portion control, I mean certainly, I think that's a, that's a very to, to a lot of people that's a very obvious and and evident uh, idea when they're, when they're trying to lose weight, but it's, it's of course not easy, you know, and, and that's where you, you, you talk about this a lot, Seth, but you, you, using, you can as a tool, right? When you can keep your blood sugar steady, it's much easier to control those portions. It's not, you, you know, most people, if, if they're controlling their portions, but they're still feeling hungry all the time, it's, it's just not going to work long term. So can you just talk, talk to that aspect of you can, you know, like using it as a tool to, to kind of, be able to achieve some of these things that that people know about but but struggle to achieve. I mean, we we overeat so much because I mean, think about it. You know, when you eat, are you really checking on is your stomach hum hungry or is your brain hungry? Um, unless your stomach's really rumbling, a lot of times it's it's really the brain. Maybe you want you know cr with cravings or um, you know stress. You know, a lot of times stress can cause overeating. Um, you might not feel it during the moment, but later in the day and if we can, if we can just control our blood sugar and prevent 
those drops in blood sugar that exaggerate those responses. Perhaps when you're stressed at work, if your blood sugar is steady, you won't look to food in, in that way or you'll be able to um, not compensate with, with extra sugar because your blood sugar is dropping. Um, and I think a lot of people look for a cup of coffee at 3 p.m. because their blood sugar is dropping. Um, so, you know, again, you know, our you can snack bars are a convenient format. You know, you know, I love our new coffee flavor, and that's just something that you can you can have. I mean, our coffee flavor has the highest dose of super starch compared to any bar, so it's just you know great mid morning or or mid. So let's talk a little bit about the you can bar. Let's talk a little bit about the you can bar, Seth. What what is it that sets the you can bars apart and makes them so unique? You know, I. They're really they're, they're they're higher they're high in protein, but they're 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 absent for what to do for carbohydrate, and a lot of them just contain fiber. Um, and that process and sorry, fiber Seth, in a I'm lot of sure. bars just doesn't really. Hey Seth, I'm not sure if uh, others on the audience also had you cut out, but but I just wanted to clarify when you were saying they're higher in protein, but but lack um, you know carbohydrate other than fiber. You weren't talking about the UCAN bars. You were talking about. A lot of other bars on the market that you know that are are lower in sugar that people might gravitate towards as a healthy option, right? So I just wanted to make that uh, point clear exactly. in case somebody missed it. But please go ahead. Definitely. So yeah, most bars on the market, a lot of them are are looking at sugar alcohols or various fibers and looking to curb hunger. Those might curb hunger in the stomach, um, but they're not focusing on curbing hunger in the brain. And that's the, the difference between our you can snack bar because of the super starch in them. Uh, it's helping curb that, that hunger in the brain by keeping your blood sugar steady, so your blood sugar is not dropping, your brain's not going, oh, hey, sugar's low, time to eat again. It's very much keeping your blood sugar steady, and the added fiber, protein, and, and fat in our bar is curbing hunger in the stomach. So it's, the, it's really the only bar that's focusing on curbing hunger in the brain in addition to the stomach, and that's why it, it, it's such a powerful tool and so unique. It's not just a low sugar bar as a way to get in some extra protein, but it's it's really focusing on that controlling hunger starting in the brain. And how does that? You know, we, you just spoke about controlling hunger. How about how about for from an energy standpoint? You know, so if we take that same model again, a lot of the bars have done you know a, a good thing and and pulled out the sugar and replaced it either with fiber or protein. You know, and and then perhaps people will think, "Hey, this is a good thing for me to eat prior to exercise. It doesn't have a lot of sugar, so it's not going to spike my blood sugar." But what's happening to folks from an energy standpoint when they're eating these bars that contain very little carbohydrate prior to exercise, especially that beginner um, exerciser? Well, so they're not they're they're in their body, which might help with some muscle mass, but they're not getting consistent blood sugar. Sugar alcohols and fibers aren't absorbed, so you're not getting energy for the brain to use during exercise. Um, so whether it's during exercise or during the workday, you know, the, the slow release of UCAN is feeding the brain. It's giving your brain actual energy use, not just getting, you know, going to the intestines and not getting absorbed like a fiber would. So we're giving, you know, you absorbable energy. For your brain to use, in addition to helping curb that hunger in the brain, and that's the powerful combo of the UCAN snack bar. So, like Seth mentioned, you know, with the UCAN snack bars, uh, it now does come in four flavors. We're excited to launch the uh, the coffee UCAN snack bar, the coffee bean snack bar, which is at the um, the bottom of the screen. We we just launched that a, a few days ago last week, and and that is our first bar uh, where we use a vegan protein blend. Um, so our other bars, the cinnamon swirl, the chocolate peanut butter, and the chocolate that. You see on the screen all contain whey protein isolate, uh, while the coffee bean bar has a, a vegan protein blend. But but again, you know, outside of the protein, what's unique about all of these bars is that you can super starch, that slow releasing carbohydrate that's gonna sustain your blood sugar and, and your energy levels and, and avoid those peaks and valleys. And and you know, one of the wonderful things about the coffee bean bar is uh, with fifteen grams of super starch, it's actually the highest dose of our unique carbohydrate in any of our bars. So from a blood sugar and energy management standpoint, uh, this is really, would you say, Seth, the premium bar that we have to offer right now? Oh, definitely. And I think, and it's low, and it's, and it's low, which is fantastic. It's, it's low in sugar, you said, right? Low in sugar and it's low in fat. Yeah. Oh, low in sugar and low in fat. Exactly. Exactly. So in terms of a 
uh, pre-workout energy uh, option, you know, exactly what we were talking about at, at the very beginning, where, where that's so important for the beginning exerciser. This is something that becomes really ideal for that person. Uh, even if you're working, you know, working out for 30 or 40 minutes, uh, you could even have half of this bar prior to getting out there or, or, or a full bar was great as well, uh, you know, because you're going to have that continued sustained blood sugar and, and steady energy effect even after your workout. Um, so Seth, with the UCAN bars, you know, when do you suggest folks experiment and, and try to use them? No, I, you know, you've got the options, you know, very much, you know, you know, if, if you're that person that's running after work or going for a workout after the work day and you haven't eaten since lunch, it's a perfect way to have at four or five o'clock. Um, you know, some folks are, are, are having it, you know, um, you know, on non-workout days, they're also doing it as a mid-morning or snack, snack, snack. People are having a snack mid-morning, a snack bar mid-morning, and then they're having bringing a packet of you know our vanilla cream or protein enhanced you can and bringing a blender bottle and having that at 3 p.m. as a way to tie them between lunch and dinner and very much helping them during long meetings and long work days to keep their blood sugar steady during during those um, afternoon hours. Really, you know, some of the most common things we hear, I mean, folks being able to, even as they advance in exercise and go longer, you know, being able to take in a UCAN snack bar prior to a workout and really feeling good for, you know, up to 90 minutes or, or two hours, uh, you know, and whether that's that long period of time of consistent exercise or some of it's exercise and then some of that's just uh, that ability to control your hunger and, and prevent that blood sugar crash in that post-workout period, you know, again, it comes back to that point we were talking about a little while ago where it's not just about how do I feel in the moment, but how do I feel, you know, an hour later, how do I feel two hours later? And, and you know, also just at three o'clock in the afternoon to tide you over for several hours until dinner, both really, really good times to utilize you can. Um, Seth, I think, uh, you know, we kind of covered most of it here today in, in terms of the application uh, and some of the unique challenges that the, uh, the beginner exerciser faces and, and, you know, specifically how they can implement our UCAN snack bars uh, into their workout routine and into their diet, uh, depending on their goals. In summary, you know, what are some of the takeaways that, that folks should leave this with? Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I definitely think that um, UCAN is completely different. Again, because it was meant for kids originally with low blood sugar, with life-threatening low blood sugar, it's finally a carbohydrate that can sustain you, keep your blood sugar steady, and not only keep your energy steady as well, but curb that brain hunger that causes overeating so much. You can always add UCAN also to a shake um, or a Greek yogurt or, or, or your meal to make, you know, to really keep you fuller longer, again, um, from that brain standpoint, um, and, and knock out those brain cravings. And really, you know, with UCAN is its simplest. A um, few points here, and, and then we'll, uh, we'll close it out for the evening. Um, so UCAN acts like a fiber that's absorbed as energy. I, I think that's such a, an important point to make. But Seth, I'd like you to kind of maybe try to explain it in layman's terms. Why do... What is the benefit of consuming fiber, you know, and, and why is you can somewhat like a fiber, but why is it also very, very different? I mean, so people look, look to look to have fiber to, you know, um, to, you know, to curb hunger or especially in the stomach and to have, have um, a carbohydrate source that doesn't store as fat. And they, but a lot of times these bars that are high in protein and high in fiber, they don't actually have things that absorb to give you energy, um, to keep your blood sugar steady, to keep you going during the work day. So we have a carbohydrate that because of its structure and, and the way it's absorbed, really much um, kind of acts like a fiber that doesn't spike your blood sugar, but it's absorbed as energy um, to give you the effects of you know steady energy for the brain and curbing hunger in the brain by keeping your blood sugar balanced. You can't all comes back to the fact that it balances your blood sugar. Um, you know, and, you know, I, you know, this is definitely a carb that curbs hunger in the brain because, your, again, your blood sugar doesn't drop, so your brain's not going, oh, hey, sugar's low, time to eat again. You know, and another key thing is that because you can is absorbed slowly, it doesn't spike the fat storage hormone insulin, so this is finally a carb that really doesn't store as fat. Um, and that's huge 
as we're trying to look for solutions to keep blood sugar steady, um, you can does that because again, it was meant for infants originally with the worst case scenario with life threatening low blood sugar, and it helped manage their blood sugar. Um, and again, you know, finally, you know, we don't we, we give you energy in a different way. It's not that quick acting sugar. It's not that caffeine rush. Um, it's, it's very much balanced energy and. It's giving you energy, again, without causing those negative effects of fat storage. So with that, uh, I, I hope, uh, you know, uh, for a lot of folks uh, that were on here today that, that may have heard about UCAN in one particular context, uh, you know, for, for endurance athletes, um, hopefully this opened up your eyes to, you know, a much wider application of UCAN and really opened your eyes up to the importance of blood sugar management, you know, and so ultimately UCAN is a tool to manage your blood sugar. And, you know, I, I don't want to discount that in any way. It's, it's actually the most effective tool to manage your blood sugar. But, you know, blood sugar management is just vital, um, especially for that person who's new to exercising, just getting started with an exercise routine. If you can manage your blood sugar, you're going to get, you're going to have better workouts. You're going to have, you know, feel better after your workout and, and be less prone to sabotaging your workout. And, you know, if you're doing both those things, then you're far more likely to keep it up and not give up or, or, you know, stop, stop on your workout plan. Cause if, if you're, you're enjoying it, if you're feeling good and, and you're seeing results, then that's the name of the game. So, uh, so Seth, it's always great to, uh, do these with you and, um, appreciate the wealth of knowledge, uh, for Seth Bronheim, I'm Varn Shriram. We really appreciate everyone joining us tonight. Seth, thank you. Uh, and talk to everybody soon. Thank you, Varn. Thank you. Good night.